Hello students, I welcome you to a new lecture of environmental science with a new topic that is water pollution. In the last lecture, we have studied air pollution and in today's lecture, we are going to see or I am going to deliver a talk about water pollution. So first we will see what is a water pollution. So water pollution can be de defined as alteration in physical, chemical or biological characteristics of water making it unsuitable for designated use in its natural state. That means the purity or the characteristics of the water so that has changed or that may be changed because of any kind of alteration. Okay. So physical means the any kind of the parameter that is maybe pH, okay, that kind of uh, uh, factors or the parameter, chemicals or chemicals means the molecular composition. Okay. And the next one is biological characteristics. Whether this water it is suitable for the growth of any living thing. So these parameters are taken in consideration and if there is an alteration in this parameter that is physical, chemical and biological characteristics, okay, then we can say this water is unsuitable for the designated use that is maybe for the drinking purpose or maybe for day to day life activities. Then next point we'll, we are going to say that is what are the sources of water pollution. So, water is an essential commodity for survival that all we know. We need water for drinking, cooking, bathing, uh, washing, irrigation and for inter industrial operations. So, most of water such most of water for such uses comes from rivers, lakes and groundwater sources. So, water has the property to dissolve many substances in it. Therefore, it can easily get polluted. Polluted. So, pollution of water can be caused by any point source or non-point sources. So, point sources are specific sites near water bodies which directly discharges effluents into them. So, if we see what are the sources of water pollution, then there are two main uh, sources in which the pollutants or the sources are classified. The first one is a point solution and the other one is non-point solution. So a point solution is that point or the, that source that is the any specific site near the water bodies which directly discharges effluents into them. Or for example, uh, any kind of industries okay, or power plant. So major Point sources of water pollution are industries, power plants, underground, underground coal mines, offshore oil wells, etc. That means the discharge or the effluents is directly, uh, they try to discharge okay, or that effluent, it is directly passed or uh, try to decompose into a nearby water source or the water body. Now, what are the non-point sources? So, the, dis the discharge from non-point sources is not in any particular uh, site. Rather, the sources are scattered which individually or collectively pollute water. Okay. That means the non-point source is the source where uh, the pollutant or the that polluted water it is scattered into different uh, area okay and afterwards that collectively that water is called as a non point source which is responsible for water pollution so surface run off from agricultural field overflowing small drains rainwater sweeping roads and fields at atmospheric deposition okay so these are the most of things are the because of the that uh, natural cycle okay, are the non-point sources of water pollution. Okay. Suppose the runoff from agricultural field that is the pesticides 
which are running from that with that water overflowing or small drains of course the polluted water or the any kind of chemicals may get mixed with the, that water and they are mixing with any different water source then rain water sweeping goes of course by that rain water the pollutant or the dust particles which are present on the road they are getting mixed with the any water body and the fields atmospheric deposition that means any kind of uh, the pollutant which is present in maybe in the air that may get mixed with the water okay? or if the bottom of the water body it is already having the, any type of toxic material or the pollutant in that case all these things are considered as a non current sources of water pollution so there are basically two uh, sources of water pollution the one is point source is point source and the other one is non point source so groundwater pollution so groundwater forms about 6.2 percent of the total water available on the planet earth and is about 30 times more than surface water right that we know so what are the ground uh, water sources that is streams lakes and estuaries Groundwater seems to be less prone to be pollution or it is less prone to be get polluted. So, as the soil mantle through which water passes helps to retain various contaminants due to its cation exchange capacity. That means if the soil is polluted or any pollutant which is newly getting percolated in the soil layer. So, slowly that percolation may exceed up to the basic layer of the mantle or the earth crust or the soil layer. Likewise, slowly many pollutants may get percolated into the groundwater and resulting the groundwater source becomes polluted. However, there are a number of potential sources of groundwater pollution. For example, the septic tank industries that is textile chemical tanneries, so deep well injections and mining, all these are activities okay, or the industries are constructed or their work is based on the soil. Okay? So indirectly they are responsible for the pollution of soil and once the soil is polluted with any kind of pollutant or the toxic material then all these sources we are considered as responsible for groundwater pollution which is irreversible why it is irreversible because the formation of soil requires so many years so that the same parameters you cannot evert back okay or it is not easy to maintain the same parameters for example ph water holding capacity likewise small small things so this abiotic factor, okay, that formation for this abiotic factor, they need a certain kind of conditions which are provided by the nature okay, or the natural force. So, by the human beings or the by man-made activities, it is hard to maintain that same parameters or the conditions even though the soil is polluted. So, groundwater pollution with arsenic, fluoride, sorry, fluoride, nitrate are posing serious health hazards. Some cases have been presented in the next few pages or the next few slides. So, there are uh, classical studies or the, the incidences were happened because of this kind of uh, materials okay, or the components and the case studies were done and the, what are the ill effects and how the mechanism that through which or the because of the reactions the humans are getting infected and what is the in, impact on the total ecosystem actually that uh, that those are the case studies okay? so in case of water pollution this different type of arsenic fluoride and nitrate are posing serious health hazards and those case studies we are going to see at the end of this chapter. Now, surface water pollution. The major source of surface water pollution are the first one is sewage. 
so emptying the drain drains and sewers in fresh water bodies causes water pollution this problem is severe in cities okay nowadays by in the modern cities okay there is of course there are certain separate compartments all the uh, projects run by municipal uh, corporation okay but earlier there used to throw all the sewage material or the effluents directly in the main stream or the main water source uh, or the main water body which is present in the city so next one is uh, industrial effluents okay. so industrial waste containing toxic chemicals acids alkalis metallic salts phenols cyanides ammonia radioactive substances etc are sources of water pollution they also cause thermal pollution of water that means because of their reaction with any other substance or by their interaction with the water they are increasing the temperature of water okay or particular water body now it is toxic to some components which are present in that water body or the aquatic ecosystem how suppose any species which is uh, exotic or which is a very highly specialized species that can survive at a particular temperature of the water body in that case if there is a fluctuation in the heat then there is a big risk for the species that how to survive in that condition if the species is tolerant for this particular uh, fluctuation in the heat or the temperature then only that species will able to survive otherwise if the species is sensitive for the heat okay then it, the species won't be able to survive in that particular environment so likewise it is harmful to aquatic ecosystem then also it is harming the circadian rhythm or the hormonal system of many species which are living in the aquatic ecosystem like the human body is working uh with at a particular temperature or we can say at a optimal temperature what is the meaning of that that at a particular temperature the enzymatic actions are going or the proteins are expressed in the body okay that are carrying some certain metabolic reactions or those proteins are required for metabolic reactions to carry out certain reactions likewise different organisms body or their functioning is working at or the function is functioning requires particular temperature for that the maintenance of that temperature is very essential when some of the organism they have capacity or they have ability to maintain body temperature like human beings but in most of the animals those who are in the lower grade okay, we can say mostly invertebrates they lack this mechanism or this property okay. synthet the next point is synthetic detergents so synthetic detergents used in washing and cleaning produce foam and pollute water okay. so the common picture or the scenario which we have see you must have seen okay in even in the picture or even in the most of the books that is that at the uh, and maybe the in the water body which is present in a particular area okay suppose in a, a rural area that at the particular water body all people are doing their work that is cleaning utensils washing clothes okay even cleaning the cattle likewise if they are doing with the detergent then it is harmful for the ecosystem because the because of the detergents okay there is a deposition of sulfate in the water body which is responsible for the eutrophication along with that the excessive uh, detergent in the water body okay may hamper or they manipulate the penetration of oxygen in the water body so that's why it is harmful along with that it is not good for the 
plants also the next is agrochemicals so agri agrochemicals like fertilizers containing nitrates and phosphates and pesticides like insecticide fungicide and herbicide wash by rain water and surface runoff polluted water so uh, if the farming is nearby the water body or the mainstream uh, of water in the city or any rural area then what happens if there is excessive use of fertilizer or the synthetic or the chemical fertilizer that most of the content the content is nitrate and phosphate because the plants need nitrate npk content that is nitrogen phosphate and uh, calcium okay so <coughs> sorry not potassium so likewise the excessive fertilizer or the fertilizers which has run off by the rain from the farms okay and if that may get mixed with the any kind of water body that is a alarming situation for the maintenance of that aquatic ecosystem because the nitrate and phosphates are going to produce algal bloom on the water surface the next one is pesticides that is insecticides that means the chemicals which are used to kill insects the next one is fug fungicide that means chemicals which are used to kill fungus and the next one is herbicides that is the herbs okay or the unwanted plants which grow uh, in the between the two crop lanes okay the common example is the runner that means the congress grass so likewise there are different uh, herbs which are growing in the farm okay so to kill them they use herbicide so likewise if these are used in excess and all this washed away by rain water and if they are getting mixed with the any mainstream water body or the near nearer uh, aquatic ecosystem okay so that is then it is a main cause of eutrophication the next one is oil spillage into sea water during drilling and shipment polluted so that is because of transportation import and export that the oil spillage on sea water so it is the means so preventing the penetration of sun rays in the water body along with that it uh, because of, it becomes a barrier for the gaseous exchange so indirectly it is harmful for the aquatic ecosystem the next one is waste heat so waste heat from industrial discharge increases the temperature of water body and affects distribution and survival of sensitive species okay, that point i have already covered then what are the effects of water pollution following are some important effects of what various types of water pollutants first one is oxygen demanding waste so organic matter which reached water body is decomposed by microorganisms present in water for this degradation oxygen dissolved in water is consumed and dissolved oxygen that is do is the amount of oxygen dissolved in given quantity of water at a particular temperature and atmospheric pressure okay so first point is whatever the organic matter reached or present in that particular aquatic ecosystem it is decomposed by microorganisms okay because the open cycle is always running like that the decomposers are degrading organic matter and producing uh the components or the nutrients okay in the form by which the plants can uptake likewise the ammonia is a substance toxic for plants but plants are converting ammonia into a nitrate so that plants can consume that nutrient and again the organic matter is produced by plant maybe by shedding of leaves or any twig so that is a close cycle which is run runs usually in the nature 
Now, for this decomposition, the required, the decomposers require dissolved oxygen or the oxygen which is present in that aquatic body. Okay. So, this oxygen is in the aquatic body or in the water, that's why we can call as a dissolved oxygen. So, so dissolved oxygen, oxygen is the amount of oxygen dissolved in the given quantity of water. Okay, that means how much amount of water present at a particular time, at particular temperature and atmospheric pressure. Okay, because a temperature and pressure are somewhere responsible for to maintain the uh, dissolved oxygen and partial pressure of oxygen at a particular time in that aquatic ecosystem. And that is most important factor for survival of many organisms. Amount of dissolved oxygen depends on aeration, photosynthetic activity in water, respiration of animals and plants and ambient temperature. So, amount of dissolved oxygen depends on aeration. Okay? If the water body is flowing or stagnant, that will define or uh, the thing which help help to uh, maintain the dissolved oxygen quantity okay or we can able to judge or research on that thing okay the next one is photosynthetic activity in water of course plants are uh, taking co2 and uh, exhaling or the giving out o2 so, if there is a photosynthetic activity in the water, that means it is a healthy aquatic ecosystem. Then respiration of animal, same the heat is produced in with, uh, by the process of respiration and the oxygen is required for the animals, okay, for the survival and plants. The next one is ambient temperature, okay. So, the waste product of the photosynthetic activity is oxygen. Okay? That is for plants, oxygen is wasteful material. That's why they are giving out or emitting out from their body. Okay? So, therefore, the more photosynthetic activity in the water, the more oxygen uh, dissociation or the emission in that aquatic ecosystem. Okay? So, all these things are responsible for maintaining the dissolved oxygen in that particular ecosystem. The saturation value of dissolved oxygen varies from 8 to 15 milligram per liter. For active fish, uh, fish species, red trout and salmon, it is maybe ranged from 5 to 8 mg per liter of dissolved oxygen is required. Whereas less desirable species like carp can survive at 3 mg per liter of dissolved oxygen. So, lower dissolved oxygen may be harmful to animals, especially fish population. Okay. So, oxygen depletion that is a deoxygenation helps in release of phosphates from the bottom sediments and cause, causes eutrophication. Okay. So, the oxygen or the higher oxygen, uh, dissolved oxygen is required for the survival of many species okay so nitrogen and phosphorus component compounds or nutrients okay so addition of these compounds containing nitrogen and phosphorus helps in the growth of algae and other plants which are on death and decay consume oxygen of water so from where uh, do these components are coming and getting mixed with the aquatic ecosystem. It is from any kind of effluent or uh, which is released by any industry. The second thing is only by because of any certain kind of metallic reaction, sorry, any kind of components reaction, okay, or the chemical components reaction that may also release sir, nitrogen and phosphorus. Now, what is the disadvantage of nitrogen and phosphorus present inside the water body? So, these are the main attraction for the algal bloom. Okay. Now, why? Because 
these are the good sources of growth for algal bloom along with that this algal bloom is forming a layer on the water surface or the bed on the water surface because of high multiplication rate the oxygen requirement is also high so what is the result of this reaction or the this thing is the algal bloom or the algae is consuming oxygen at a faster rate as compared to the other organic uh, organisms which are present in that aquatic ecosystem resulting there is a we can say the hazardous effects or the ill effects we can observe in the uh, aquatic ecosystem so under anaerobic conditions foul smelling gases are produced okay so excessive growth or decomposition of plant material will change the concentration of carbon monoxide which will further change the ph of water so changes in the ph oxygen and temperature will change many physiochemical characteristics of water that is called as a eutrophication that means they are forming a film on the water surface it is consuming oxygen at a faster rate it is preventing the sun rays to reach at the bottom of the any aquatic ecosystem because the phytoplanktons are growing on the which are submerged okay or the plants which require soil for their growth okay that require certain amount of ox sorry the certain amount of sun rays for photosynthesis resulting the ecosystem which is or the next trophic level organism which is dependent on the fire uh, sorry or dependent on the plants or the vegetation okay they won't able to survive same the main effect sorry the same effect we can observe the next trophic level that means if there is no uh, vegetation the no there is no food for the small fishes or any kind of insect which is present inside the aquatic ecosystem so no insect the next trophic level we, if we see consider that is amphibians or the any frog kind of thing that may be will not get any kind of food the next is maybe small fishes this may next step is the large fishes or maybe the topmost consumer may be human or any kind of bird okay for example eagle so likewise this is hampering or showing the ill effects on each uh, sorry each trophic level of ecosystem <clears throat> this is changing the ph oxygen and temperature that means it is responsible for the change in metabolic rate of any organism which is present inside the aquatic ecosystem the next one is pathogens many waste water especially sewage contain many pathogenic or the discharge sorry disease causing and non pathogenic microorganisms and many viruses okay so that we have seen some of the endemic or the epidemic diseases where for example cholera dysentery hepatitis typhoid jaundice okay <clears throat> these are uh, or the these epidemic diseases are causing because of any certain kind of bacteria virus or fungi so all these are able to survive in the aquatic ecosystem and the, by contaminated water system, water body these are getting spread out throughout the area okay so that is we can say a pollution or the contamination the next is toxic compounds so pollutants such as heavy metals pesticides cyanides and many other organic and inorganic compo compounds are harmful aquatic organisms the demand of a dissolved oxygen increases with the addition of biodegradable organic matter which is expressed as the biological oxygen demand okay so all these pollutants these are maybe organic or inorganic components are harmful for aquatic ecosystem that means the demand demand of dissolved oxygen increases so the less the dissolved oxygen high the 
dissolve oxygen demand okay that can be expressed as a biological oxygen demand that means the higher bod or what is the interpretation of higher bod that means the water body is polluted so biological oxygen demand is high or the dissolved oxygen demand is high, demand is high that means the higher pollutants are present in that aquatic ecosystem so bod is defined as the amount of dissolved oxygen required at aerobically decomposed biodegradable organic matter at a given volume of water over a period of 5 days at 20 degree okay, that is a uh, uh, the bookish uh, definition the more bod values of any water sample are associated with poor water quality right because the dissolved oxygen content is very less that's why the biologically sorry biological oxygen demand is very high the non biodegradable toxic compounds biomagnify in the food chain causes toxic toxic effects at various levels of food chain some of these substances like pesticides methyl mercury etc move to the bodies of organism from medium in which the organisms live substances like ddt are not water soluble and have affinity in for body lipids okay that means the substances are getting stored in the fat bodies or lipids now what is the why or what is the disadvantage if they are getting stored in the fat bodies because fat bodies are responsible for the formation of hormones okay so they are indirectly hampering the endocrine system okay or the system which is running or maintaining the balance of hormones okay so these substances tend to accumulate in the organism's body the process is called as bioaccumulation bio is the any living thing and in that body there is accumulation getting stored that's why it is called as a bioaccumulation the concentration of these toxic substances builds up at a successive level of food chain this process is called as a biomagnification that means any toxic substance which is pre present in the lower trophic level of food chain may be absorbed by any uh, phytoplankton okay and if the next trophic level that may be some kind of small fish or what uh, the any insect okay? if those organisms eaten up or the phytoplanktons which are present in the aquatic ecosystem having pollutant or toxicant in the body so of course that is transferred or that bioaccumulates into the next level likewise the small fish large fish and top level or consumers so till that time or by the reaching the trophic higher trophic level or the topmost consumer the concentration of toxicant or any pollutant increases that is called as a biomagnification for example if we take a example of ddt now we start from the lower point or we start from the water suppose in the water ddt concentration is in the ppm that is parts per million so certain micrograms in 1000 liter okay so for example it is 0 0.000001 ppm parts per million okay now if the toxicant is produced uh, present in a very less amount and zooplankton which are feeding on uh, which are living in the water okay of course they are getting absorbed or they are absorbing all the toxic material which is present in that water for example ddt so the concentration increases why the zooplanktons are ingesting the maximum amount of water or the maximum amount of water or the total volume of there were uh, the of the body okay so likewise as compared to their body weight or the volume the concentration is very high okay the same thing is 
for the next level it is minos minos are fishes okay the concentration is increased that is 0 0.1 ppm why that minos are not only eating one zooplankton or two zooplanktons they are eating thousands of zooplanktons okay and if we see the zoo the the zooplankton's mass okay that means the minnows are ingesting all the zooplankton that is total body mass it is ingested by minnows or consumed by minnows so of course the concentration is increasing same for the next fish that is a needle fish or the next trophic level needle fish that needle fish is not saying that i am going to eat only one fish per day they are ingesting or they are trying to consume as many as fishes according to their requirement so of course because of this levels the concentration is increasing and the last one is birds or either mammals okay so the large amount of fishes are is consumed consumed by the many top consumers okay so ultimately the higher concentration you can observe so in the water what we have seen that is 0 0.00001 ppm and till it reaches to the topmost consumer it is increased so many times okay so that is called as a biomagnification okay? that substance it's Toxic substances builds up at a successive level of food chain. This process is called as a biomagnification. And if it gets accumulated in any of the uh, trophic level, then it is called as a bioaccumulation. So, toxic substances polluting water ultimately affects human health. So, heavy metals like lead, mercury, cadmium causes various types of diseases. A mercury dumped into water is transformed into water soluble methyl mercury by bacterial action. Okay? So, this kind of bacteria or any fungi may help to convert uh, these substances into a different form. Okay? So, methyl mercury accumulated, uh, accumulates in fish. So, in 1953, people in Japan suffered from member, uh, numbness of body parts, vision, hearing problems, and abnormal mental behavior. This is called as a Minamata disease. Okay, that was a one of the case uh, which is usually studied uh, in the environmental science. Okay, so it is a big impact or the biggest case we can uh, say of the bio accumulation or the biomagnification that is occurred due to consumption of methyl mercury contaminated fish caught from Minamata Bay in Japan. So, this disease claimed 50 lives and uh, permanently paralyzed about 700 persons. So, that was too scary. Pollution was another uh, heavy metal that is a cadmium okay, that had caused the disease called as itai itai in the people of Japan. So, diseases was, disease was caused by cadmium contaminated rice. So, rice fields were irrigated with the effluence of zinc smelters and drainage water from mines so is this in this the diseases in this disease bone liver kidney lung pancreas thyroid are affected so both the cases or the both the diseases are caused because of there is a bioaccumulation in the water body okay or the effluents directly released in the aquatic ecosystem the another uh, pollutant is arsenic that is arsenic pollution of groundwater in Bangladesh and West Bengal, it caused various types of abnormalities. So, the another thing is, or the another pollutant is nitrate. When present in excess in drinking water, causes blue baby syndrome or methane, uh, sorry, that is methahemoglobinemia. Okay. So, this disease develops when a part of hemoglobin is converted into non functional oxidized form. So, what is the function of hemoglobin that carries oxygen? Or the four molecules of oxygen at a one time and they are passing or giving to a particular organ which is uh, where is a high requirement of oxygen for example brain okay. now what happens because of this nitrate that the part which is responsible for the carry out this oxygen 
okay it becomes non functional that means that part or the particular unit of hemoglobin it is not uh, able to carry out carry that oxygen molecule with itself and pass to a require that require destination okay or the organ so nitrate is that's why you can observe methane um, that is methane hemoglobinemia absence of oxygen okay so that causes glue baby glue baby syndrome so no oxygen so you by by even you when you are drawing the diagram you show that deoxygenated blood with a blue color okay that means the absence of oxygen so nitrate in stomach part gets changed into nitrites which can produce cancer causing product, uh, products in stomach okay excess of fluoride in drinking water causes defects in teeth and bone this is called as a fluorosis so that was observed in india uh, more prominently but nowadays they have changed the parameter and now it is uh, in a more safe quantity that the fluoride get mixed with the uh, what we can say the water uh, processing or the any or uh, drain not drainage or any polluted water which is processed by municipal uh, and they are making fit to for drinking that water or for to use that water so in that process the fluoride is added pesticides in drinking water ultimately reach humans and are known to cause various health problems for example ddt aldrin dialdrin etc have therefore been banned okay, recently in andhra pradesh people suffered from various abnormalities due to consumption of endosulfan that is a pesticide contaminated cashew nuts okay so likewise many pesticides are still uh been still been used and still people are using uh in the farms okay which now some of the pesticides are banned in india okay those who are maybe some paracord or any kind of other uh, pesticides so those are showing any ill effects not only on the human body by consumption but these are harmful for plants also okay for example you must have studied the cyclic reactions okay or the z reaction which is the ps1 run by the ps1 and ps2 photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 so if this kind of pesticides are uh, used by the farmers or any individual or these are the pesticides given to plants okay so these are showing different or hazardous effects on plants also for example the paracords are responsible for stopping the reaction between ps1 and ps2 that is the photon which is get transferred between ps1 and ps2 which is responsible for photosynthesis so likewise the many pesticides are harmful for plants also now next thing is how can we control water pollution that is it is easy to reduce water pollution from point sources by legislation that means a group of rules which is given by the government however due to absence of defined strategies it becomes difficult to prevent water pollution from non point sources right because of from point sources by any kind of rules or regulation you can uh, give a notice and that people can stop the effluents which are passing into a main aquatic ecosystem but there is no one which is which can regulate non point sources okay so the following points may be helpful for reducing the pollution from non point sources so judicious use of agrochemicals like pesticide and fertilizers which will reduce their surface runoff and leaching so the which are the harmful pesticides insecticide or any kind of the fertilizers that we can ban or can uh, put a limit or give a limit that up to certain limit only can use so that will reduce at least the impact or the intensity of that uh, chemical 
avoid use of this on slow plants okay of course by rain uh, the slow plants soil okay, which is already contaminated by the any kind of pollutant make it mix with the nearby aquatic water body so use of nitrogen fixing plants to supplement use of fertilizers so adapting integrated pest management to reduce reliance on pesticides so what it is or what is this option use of nitrogen fixing plants to supplement the use of fertilizers that all we know that leguminous plants are having nodules at their roots so the, actually the bacteria are living in that part who are able to fix the nitrogen that means they are converting nitrogen in a such a way or in a such a form that the plants are easily uptake that form okay because the nitrogen is, is is an essential component which is required for the plant growth so likewise we can use different fertilizers which are responsible nit for nitrogen fixation the next one is integrated pest management to reduce reliance on pesticides so can we use any kind of other technique or uh, any kind of certain chemicals for example the pheromones which are usually released by the insects okay to attract another, the opposite sex likewise we can artificially form this kind of sex hormones and can attract insects to another point then there are different strategies that is fit, pitfall trap or any other system by which we can trap insects without harming them or without any kind of chemical component incorporation in that ecosystem okay. then prevent runoff of manure divert such runoff to basin for settlement the nutrient rich water can be used as a fertilizer in the field okay. so separate drainage of sewage and rain water should be provided prevent overflow of sewage water with rain water so that is the main thing we should do planting trees would be reduced pollution by sediments and will prevent soil erosion and controlling water pollution from point sources and treatment of wastewater is essentially before being discharged so parameters which are to consider as a reduction of reduction in such waters uh, water are total solid biological oxygen demand dissolved oxygen or the chemical oxygen demand nitrate phosphate all these things we can keep in a control now wastewater should be properly treated by primarily and secondary treatment okay so that is a wastewater treatment what it is actually that is there are three treatments that is primary secondary and tertiary treatment which is done on the uh, wastewater or the sewage water okay so what is a primary treatment in the primary treatment there is a screen is placed okay so any kind of grit or the solid waste it is getting passed by this screen okay that means a solid particle or the solid pollutants are getting separated at that point or the primary treatment then it is passed into a grit chamber okay so any kind of sediment or grit that is separated from this chamber and the water is then passed into a primary settling tank okay now what happens after that the actual secondary treatment starts so in the secondary treatment there is aeration which is done and they are settled into a secondary tank in the secondary tank there is a activated sludge that means there is a microbial action is done or the microbes are added which uh, can be operate at a aerobic condition okay? because the aeration we have done again that passes into that uh, aeration okay and uh, can be passed into secondary settling tank now after that which is the important or the not sorry important after the aeration or by the organic matter which is digested by microbes okay the safe water or the can say the treated water is separated and the chlorination is done that is effluent and the remaining sludge okay that is 
a pass into a sludge digestion tank where the anaerobic digest uh, digester that means anaerobic bacteria are sorry bacteria are added in that tank and again there is a sludge treatment is done okay so after that the sludge dewatering is done that means a sludge disposal is done and the whatever the leftover water sorry or the separated water is again sent to a for the chlor chlorination and the water is ready for the use okay or to transport into a or maybe city or any nearby area okay so this type of treatment of waste water does depends on the characteristic and the desired quality of water after treatment okay so primary secondary and tertiary treatment is there and all parameters are done so what is the uh, purpose of this waste water treatment is to remove or reduce organic and inorganic substances nutrients toxic substances kill pathogen pathogenic organisms okay because we need good quality water which is suitable for the human consumption okay so all these things are all the parameters are taken in a consideration and this uh, process is done okay now this is the cross section of trickling filter so this one is used in this activation sludge uh, step what it is if you observe in this tank there is a media okay? in this media the nothing but all the uh, living components for example microbes worms insects are placed or they are uh, added over there just to digest organic matter now next thing is uh, it is called as a rotating biological contactor it is RCB. So it is a device which is used to digest organic matter which is present inside the water body or that the polluted water. So you can observe a disc which is rotating continuously. Now the microbes are attached on this disc. See you can observe fixed biofilm. That means the microbes, the aerobic microbes are attached on this biofilm. And as the uh, rotate this wheel is rotating, there is a continuous supply of oxygen. So you can observe the one third portion is in the water and the remaining portion is in the air. So there should be continuous oxygen transfer, and by the rotating, they are digesting or decomposing the organic matter which is present in that in that aquatic ecosystem. So that was up to a uh, water pollution. So the points which we have covered in today's lecture are what are water pollu what is a water pollution? Then what are the sources of water pollution? What is the effect? What are the effects of water pollution? And what we can do to control water pollution? So these points we have covered in today's lecture.